Kay Stevens is a cyberbully lecturer and author. She's set to publish Ethel is Hot, LOL, independently this year in 2014. It's a story about a 12 year old girl and her friends who. Uh, well, say hi, first of all. Okay. Oh. Let me have you say hi. Hey there, how are you? <laughs> Good. I'm so glad. I, I love to talk and help people learn more about cyberbullying. Um, so, but really quickly, we'll go into the book a little bit more, but, but what is the book about? Well, you know, the book is about uh, one girl's experience, and I picked the middle grade age of 12 to 13, 14, because that's, ten, that's a tendency when cyberbullying begins, and, um, and I picked a, an all-girls school setting for this, um, because girls um, statistically cyberbully more than boys do. So it's about a little girl who is kind of a nerd. She's kind of a um, transplant to the new school, and she's all right with herself. She's okay with her nerddom, but um, it, basically what happens is is in another girl in school starts to do this relation re relational aggression kind of tactic, and they get into it, and... Um, and it just keeps mushrooming and, and gets bigger and bigger and it's beyond anything that Ethel can actually handle emotionally. Uh, it's just uh, it's a school-wide smear campaign is what it ends up being and it's using all the latest tools. It's, it's, it's basically the, 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 the perpetrator is this girl who wants kind of like the Kim Kardashian YouTube internet fame. And the way to go about it in her world is to make fun of Ethel and turn it into like a little uh, mini YouTube reality series so that it might get picked up in Hollywood. So, you know, uh, here's Ethel um, just trying to deal with school and everything and finding herself the butt of this um, entire smear campaign. And it's um, basically updated to 2013, 2014. All the kids have smartphones, all the kids have iPads, and in, in Maine where we live and where the book is uh, set is, um, is, is one of the only states that has ever uh, given all of its middle and high school students iPads and laptops. And uh, so here you have an entire generation of That's kids. in Maine where you live. And, and yeah. I want to get into the book a little bit more, including yeah. the fact that you've you're funding this, you're publishing it independently, and you're funding mm -hmm. it through Kickstarter. But let, let me go back to... to some of your, as we might call your street cred, you, you're, yeah. you've been very, very involved in fighting the battle about cyberbullying. In fact, something very interesting that, that you told me before we started meeting here in this Google Hangout, yeah. which is this has been going on. Cyberbullying is not something new. According no. To you. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I started working with middle school girls in Maine around 2002. Uh, in a technology online environment, and that was the origins of where I started to see what you call a digital pylon, where girls all, uh, you know, gang up on one girl online. I mean, ten years ago is when really cyberbullying started, in in my estimation. I started to see it, and I started to research it back then. And um, and in about 2006 and 2007, um, Megan Meyer, a 13-year-old girl, was the first nationally known victim of a cyberbullying situation and um, she was so horrendously harassed that she made the very fateful choice of taking her life at age 13. Mm -hmm. It was because of Megan and because of other girls I'd worked with that I really started to begin researching writing a book called Cybersland, How to Understand, Prevent, Combat and Transform the six most common cyberbullying tactics, including the ones that were used on Megan Meyer. And um, from then on, uh, we, we, uh, my co-author, my co Vanitha Nair, and I, who had worked in the technology online community for the middle school girls, she and I wrote the book. Uh, Time Warner Cable sponsored it, and we uh, published it under our imprint. And then most recently, the Indie Reader Discovery Awards gave it first prize in nonfiction in 2013. So out of that big book for, for parents, I started writing the young adult novel, Ethel is Hot, LOL, which is the title of the website that demeans her. And that is really now geared towards the middle school girls. So Cyber Slam and Ethel go together as companion books at this point. Well, what is it that, that parents are missing, that schools are missing? I mean, you know, I, I don't want to sound like an old guy, but I am, which is, you know... <laughs> 
why is this so much worse than what you know I had to put up with growing up in school? Right. You know, and and you know, I'm Generation X, and I've got one foot in the old school way of being traditionally bullied and understanding what's happening today, and. I think just because so many parents of tweens and teens are Generation X or baby boomers who are grandparents taking care of kids, uh, this just was not what they grew up with. And uh, like you and I were talking about, the technology and the platforms that these kids are using pretty much changes every other couple months. So you're constantly trying to close the um, barn door once the horses have gotten out with the technology. But um, this is a real problem. I know for, for folks in Maine, because I've gone around and spoken to hundreds of parents and, and teachers and, and students in Maine last year, it's, uh, it, it is such an amorphous concept to them. Uh, they, they, they think they know what cyberbullying is, but they really don't have a grasp on how to identify it. And moreover, they're having a real hard issue with uh, actually coming up with policies in the schools because Sometimes the old school way of thinking is, hey, it's bullying. Everybody goes through it. I got through it when I was a kid, and it made me stronger. You know, you need to go through it too, which is a really archaic way of actually approaching this. But but I think one of the points you're making, though, is that, it, I mean, it's kind of 24-7 now. I mean, yeah. if we were growing up, we had a yeah. bully. I mean, not to make light of it, I guess it was as advanced as it was for those days. But you know, we got a break. In these days, there's no yeah. break. If you're online, you know, and you're, you're a victim, they can get you all day long. They get you all day long. And, and one of the things I can't stand hearing from adults is, well, why don't they just shut off the computer? That'll stop cyberbullying right away. And it's so, they're not getting it when they say that because, you know, 70% of uh, tweens and teens at this point have smartphones. I mean, have internet access on their iPads, their iPhones, their Xboxes, their laptops, every device that a parent hands to them, they have internet access. And with that constant 24-7 internet access comes 24-7 uh, harassment if somebody is out to get you. I call it a um, psychological warfare. You know, you don't just turn off the computer when there's psychological warfare coming at you. As a kid, you are absolutely overwhelmed. You're frightened. You're uh, you're paranoid. You you have no idea who's your friend, who's not, because usually the uh, psychological warfare is manifested by an anonymous little mob. So it's t not only 24/7, but it is it's incredibly anxiety producing to a degree that I don't think our generation of people who uh, were traditionally bullied ever felt before. So what, okay, so what 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 do we need to be looking out for as parents first? What what is it that we're missing besides the idea of okay, they can't shut off the the computer? Well, I mean, I, I say treat every uh, device you give your kid like a chainsaw. You know, you wouldn't give your kid a chainsaw without teaching him how to use it or really training him how to use it. I mean, you know, kids over Christmas. I'm sure got millions of new uh, technological toys, and the fact is, is you got to, as a parent, have the conversation with your kids about here's the ground rules. You know, here's the ground rules with communication because this is not about the technology; it's all about the behavior. No matter what device you have, you know, the, the ground rules are it, you will not treat somebody with disrespect. You will not uh, use your device, like a video camera, to film somebody without their knowledge. Right, but as a parent, you know, we do this, mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I think I... What's the I, consequences? I can, What's the consequence? Consequence, you're right. I, I agree. I agree, yeah. but, you know, I think but it's it's, schools, you talk about too. this happening a lot more with, with girls than, yeah. than boys. I have a teenage son. Um, you know, and I think of him as a, as a good kid, but every once in a while, I, I'm even surprised at the message that doesn't get translated. You know, he thinks, oh, I don't have this app, it's fine, but if I go onto the website, uh, you know, no mom and dad, I don't have the app. Right, right. But I'm right, able right. to access this via the, the website. You didn't say anything about a website. Yeah, you're vocalizing exactly a lot of the frustration I hear from parents, too. Like A lot of parents who say, I, I have these conversations with my kids. We, we are talking about this. You know, why is this still happening? And again, um, it's, it's a world that they're involved in, that they're living in, that you're not in. So it's so much easier to 
join up on something like Ask FM without the parents knowing about it and then find themselves getting cyberbullied. And That's I mean, exactly I think, the stuff I was talking about. Yeah. We've talked about Ask FM here and yeah. and you don't need the app to see what's going on on Ask FM, and that's right. you know. And when they're done with Ask FM, I mean, it's just like you know, Facebook is so old hat you know, to them. And now it's Instagram, and then Instagram, it's uh, it's Snapchat. I think they moved on to yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know. and you can't keep up with it as a parent. You can't keep up with it. Um, and again, I, I'm I'm just saying the conversation is about the behavior. It's you know, I mean. You wouldn't, and believe me, when I'm saying this, I'm not, I'm not coming down on, on parents because I know how frustrated they are and how overwhelmed they are by um, having to constantly monitor this kind of um, uh, behavior on, on the uh, Internet and their devices and stuff. I'm just saying, like, everybody who hands, and I'm talking about parents who start with young kids, you know, 10, 11, you've got to hand these kids the devices with a set of ground rules for everything. And then... And you know the consequences are, the consequences are you know if if I hear back from you or from somebody else that you've um, used this in, in the wrong way, then, you know now we're going to talk about our own house consequences. But uh, but then you're also having to be very vigilant about are you getting cyberbullied by somebody else on your digital device? Will you tell me about it when it happens? You know, and a lot of kids won't even tell their parents because they have this sort of snitch code, and if if they go ahead and tell their parents, their biggest fear is that the parents are going to make it worse, or they're going to take the digital devices away, so they won't be able to monitor what's being said about them. Um, but you know, this is everything we talk about in CyberSlam, and it's a it's a basic step by step manual for parents and teachers on how to approach this type of conversation that I'm talking to you about now, how to set up um, some ground rules, and how to actually teach your kids about the tactics so that they are the ones that can identify it before it happens to them and turns into a wildfire situation. Yeah, the, 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 is it the case sometimes that the kids don't even realize that they're being bullied? Is that? Yeah, yeah I think there's a lot of newbie kind of behavior that happens and you know geez you know you can just make a joke these days and the internet culture I think is such such more of a vicious uh, and a caustic internet culture now than it was ten years ago I'll give you a great example uh, I was just looking at uh, gawker.com and a th 13 year old girl had just tweet tweeted something um, that was a joke it was something to the effect of wow it's 2014 and the earth is so beautiful I can't believe it's 2014 years old and she was right. just putting yeah. it as a joke and the internet went nuts and uh, seriously the, the culture got toxic fast and people were telling her to go kill herself you know and so it, w what do you do with a takeaway from that you know it's I'm I'm just nonplussed at how vicious people can be, and and when how kids can inadvertently get themselves into some major hot water territory very fast without even thinking is it, about it. Is it the anonymity too? Also, that the that the kids, I mean, that beyond ask if I they just don't feel that the kids who are bullying, they don't feel they're going they're going to be consequences, or is it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, like, how many times have you uh, been on uh, CNN and? Uh, read a story and then click through all the comments, and you see. Oh, how the, comment, the comments are the most dangerous place on the planet. Uh, do not read. You know, I mean, I, I read the comic, the comments, yeah. for for enjoyment purposes. But I mean, it, the meanest, scariest, most destructive human beings on the planet are on the comment section. So I guess that's kind of a that, sense of what the kids are going through in terms of yeah. bullying. That's exactly I'm, like the comment section on any hot, hot button story is exactly what Ask FM is to the kids and you're right it's it's what it is it's the anonymity it's a it's called the disinhibition effect it's a psychological term of not being able to empathize with the target or um, feel that you're even doing anything wrong because you can't read their body language you can't actually see the hurt that they're going through it's a quick click and send and you know wipe your hands and you're done and it's a it's a very destructive way of behaving and communicating and we're all in this internet culture part of that every time we feel like you know responding to something snarky that somebody said online that is that disinhibition effect what what okay so what is your number one piece of advice? Uh, and I do want to know where, where can you get. First of all, where can you get CyberSlam? 
Well, you can go get it off our website uh, for a discount at www.cyberslam.com, and you can also find it on Amazon, and we also have it on Kindle. Um, and my number one advice, boy, I, there's so much. I, see, you know what, Mark, it changes so much every day that I don't even have a number one advice right now. Um, I would say... Uh, follow our Facebook page, CyberSlammed on Facebook, because I'm constantly trying to find the latest updates and things to watch out for as parents. Like the first I heard of well, Ask what's, what's the latest? I, I don't know if you can check your Facebook page mm -hmm. right now or whatever. But what, what is the number? What is the what's the latest thing that you've warned about? Or what's something that we need to be you know okay, this week? Yeah. We need to be able one two two new tactics that I've seen crop up in just the year and a half. Uh, that the book has been published is um, a tactic called text bombing where kids are using their uh, smartphones to uh, basically assault somebody else's phone with just tons of, of either vicious messages or nonsensical messages or a mob will all text bomb one person sort of like a digital pylon and you know with the intent of harassing them 24-7 or breaking their phone by having too many text messages actually, you know, uh, uh, interfere with the platform. And the other tactic I've seen crop up quite a bit that's not in the book is called, or I'm calling it, a um, virtual burn book. And it's when a student uh, takes, you know, three or four or five, six, uh, usually girls, pictures at their school, sets it up on a website, and invites everybody to come in and ridicule and slam them. Um, and add comments to it, similar to Ask FM. Mm. Yeah. Well, that. Uh, yeah. Why, is it, why, why? Why girls more than guys? Well, I think boys definitely have uh, spots of, of of cyberbullying, and it tends to happen more in gaming, like on Xbox, when they're trying to um, uh, do virtual gaming with one another. Uh, but you know, girls. Why do, do I have any? statistics why I don't really have any statistics why they are the ones who cyberbully more but girls tend to be more uh, verbal and, and more uh, relational in terms of using the technology uh, around their relationships and to form them and to uh, ostracize and you know exclude and things like that um, but you know I'm, I'm being a little general there I'm, I'm not saying that all girls are the ones who cyberbully it's just there just t tends to be a tendency around older girls who will uh, lash out with the technology they have in a relational way. It's all about the relationships. It's all about offline conflict that spurs this. Now, Ethel is hot, LOL. You, you, yeah. You're funding through Kickstarter, which I find fascinating. What made you go that route? I... I just thought that it would be kind of a cool way to uh, do a self-published project under the umbrella of CyberSlammed. Uh, we got funding from Time Warner Cable to do uh, CyberSlam, so I thought I'd just reach out to the bigger community at large and see if anybody had interest in crowdfunding uh, a novel about a, a girl who gets cyberbullied and have it be a cautionary tale. And when the book comes out, you know, give it to their daughters and have them use it maybe to talk about the tactics that happened in the book and kind of be more aware of it. It's a, it, it, it's, it's definitely a, it's like a middle grade novel, but there are some major messages in it that I think would benefit a lot of 12 year old girls getting into social media for the first time. So um, you're fully funded. Can I ask how much? Yeah, it was about um, 1200 to do, and I've decided just to uh, use the funds to uh, get it up on Kindle, so it's not going to be a physical book. It'll be a Kindle um, book off of uh, Amazon, and right now I've got this, I've got the copywriter who is working on it, and I've got, I'm working with the design, uh, or co the cover design next week, so I'm really moving forward with it. I'm really excited that, that everybody was... Uh, I got it funded within the 30-day period, even over the goal, and I'm just really excited that people are, are loving the idea of it, and that you know it's going to be something that comes to fruition around uh, February is when we get it done. All right, now you lecture around Maine, and yet mm -hmm. you have the books. Um, where can people find you? Where can people 
touch base with you? Oh, you, you can find me through cyberslam.com. That's, that's really the hub of where to find everything that we're doing and all these resources that we have for parents, free resources for parents and schools. So go to cyberslam.com and you'll um, you know, be part of our community. And, and like I said, I'm, all, I'm constantly trying to find ways to help parents and help teachers um, and kind of like uh, just act like the bridge. And, and believe me, this is not my full-time job. I, I just do this out of a hobby. I do this um, on top of my full-time job. So um, for me, this is just really... Well, what's your full-time job? I'm a arts and entertainment writer for a local Maine newspaper. Wow. Yeah. They have arts and entertainment in Maine? <laughs> yep. It's not all about <laughs> lobsters and lighthouses. <laughs> hey, you're doing important work. Whether you, It sounds like it's probably full-time either way. Um, and, uh, you know, continue to get the message out because this is such an important issue that the parents and the kids have to deal with. So. Absolutely. Hey, Stevens, thank you. Thank you so much, Mark, and thanks for letting me rant and rave and talk all over the place about this. Thank you very much. Uh, my pleasure. <laughs>